It started on a Wednesday. I had stumbled into work, <laughs> reeking of whiskey and rejection. I licked my fingers to wipe the black coal that hung heavy under my eyes. I rummaged through my purse for a solution to my face. Ah, red lipstick. I shall use you on my lips and my cheeks. I glared into a compact and muttered to myself, that'll do, pig. <laughs> on this humble day, I choose to put myself out there, good foot forward and all. I plan to wade through the barrels of bullshit. Single moms can date, right? I wanted to play the game too, see what all the hubbub was about. I wanted to meet my twin soul. That was the day I decided to try internet dating. <laughs> what you doing, my coworker asked. I sneered it from my computer. Starting a dating profile on OkCupid. It's like online shopping, but for men. <laughs> I went on a date last night. No kiss, no hug, no dice. I was rejected. From that bartender? Yup. The one who's missing a tooth? <laughs> yeah, what does that matter? He sighed. Hell, I fucking sighed. I looked at him helplessly and went back to slamming my fingers on the keyboard. Height. Short. Ethnicity. Other. <laughs> Body type. Curvy. <laughs> Smokes when drinking. Drinks desperately. <laughs> Status, divorced, has kid, has cat, speaks English. I tried not to spend too much time constructing my responses. This was an organic, romantic experience. This would lead to candlelight, late night, hushed voice, dry humping sessions with the man of my dreams. <laughs> I wanted the person that read this to see my bright, shiny penny of a soul. This was an absolute representation of moi. That's how you did this thing, right? Truth, uncompromising snark. Pictures that may be a little bit old. <laughs> My self-summary began as, life is too short to hang out with normal people. I guess that's why I'm surrounded by so many fun-loving freaks. I like to be amused, or at the very least amusing. I'm a real straight shooter. I also have a pickle tattooed on my arm. <laughs> movies, books, and music? Well, I like gladiator movies, rock and roll, sandwiches, and Bukowski. You should message me if you have an amazing sense of humor, or at the very least, an appreciation for an amazing sense of humor. Also, you must like bottle rockets and sandwiches. If you like to buy a girl steak and whiskey, <laughs> oh, and if you're Steve McQueen, uh, yeah, <laughs> definitely message me if you're Steve McQueen. <laughs> I smushed some pictures up, sat back ever so pleased with myself, <laughs> and I waited for the strange to start pouring in. <laughs> a, couple <laughs> a couple of my favorites included, Yo, Suze, I've come back to your profile a few times already, splashing around in your terse prose and musing on how I already had a huge fucking hard on to be Steve McQueen, even before I knew it would exponentially improve my odds of getting to sniff your panties. <laughs> You should be a controlled substance, or a national treasure, or some goddamn thing. Wanna get weird? <laughs> and then who could forget straight shooting? You like wine, and I have a ridiculous wine hookup. I like boobs, and you appear to have amazing boobs. <laughs> I think that's potentially a great combo. When I did manage to weed out the idiots and serial killers, we'd arranged to meet in a public place, typically the most trendy spot. The Asian Fusion Brewery? Sure. 
I'd linger in my car for a few minutes before, checking myself in the mirror one more time, nervous, like it was a job interview. You got this, Suze. Exude charm. They are going to love you. I'd walk to my date with a false confidence I'd save for such occasions. But something was always immediately off. Like the time my date said, uh, I'd kiss you, but I have a really bad cold. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and then other times I would be straight up stood up. Sorry, Suze, I saw you sitting at the bar and I got a panic attack. I drove home. Oh, I had read these profiles. I had saw the pictures. I had reread the profiles. Why was this not working? You'd think with my amazing boobs and terse prose, I would have a discerning eye. <laughs> but they were way older, shorter, creepier in person, way stupider than their profiles suggested. <laughs> and that's when Simon appeared that shiny trophy in my filthy OkCupid okay message box. I was refreshed, relieved, and ready to get weird. <laughs> he said he liked a simple life, no drama, and had an amazing sense of humor. His message was funny, honest, and self-deprecating. This was it, the man I'd been waiting for. He had said he'd wanted to talk to me for weeks, but was intimidated by my cold, bitchy face that somehow <laughs> looked warm in certain photos. <laughs> I didn't know what that meant and I didn't care. I told him I had never figured out how to put my clothes away, that my five-year-old calls our cat an asshole, and that <laughs> I was, truth to be told, a horrid and wretched woman. Miraculously, he was charmed. We met at a spot in Hillcrest. I was incredibly nervous, but after seeing him and getting that awkward hug out of the way, I felt oddly comfortable. I felt a connection. We tested each other's boundaries through food. I snuck my fork over to his plate and stabbed some coleslaw. He took a bite directly from my sandwich. <laughs> Did he taste the subtle fennel, that spicy finish? the cherry-flavored wet and wild lip gloss. <sighs> it felt so intimate. He walked me to my car, and we kissed in the middle of the day. Two strangers that had figured out the logarithm of internet dating, proudly writing our answers on the chalkboard and getting gold stars next to our names. It was immediate, like a frenzy. We had a hard hankering for each other. Saturday turned to Sunday and rolled into Monday. He told me that when he looked at me, I gave him ideas. My couch was thoroughly abused, and so was his. We talked about how we were as children, teenagers, and semi-adults, what the holidays were like growing up. There were late night drives down the Silver Strand, listening to oldies. I brought over my favorite kale salad to meet his famous jerk chicken. He'd stop by my work, watching me eat my packed lunch while we talked about his day. He made me smile, and that made me want to make him feel loved and special. <sighs> but there was a persistent nagging, a laundry list of reasons on why we didn't make sense. I filed them away with a different excuse. He didn't like my friends. Well, they were kind of assholes. <laughs> He had issues with my drinking. I'll slow down one day. <laughs> my parallel parking sent him over the edge. I am a woman. <laughs> he would constantly send me self-help articles. Top 20 things happy people do differently. <laughs> Exercising together equals better sex. Was he telling me I was unhappy, fat, and bad in the sack? No, he just cared. It was his way of showing it. We made sense, didn't we? The internet told us we were 99% compatible. <laughs> so far, we chalked up the remaining 1% to the fact that I had never watched The Wire, and he hated tarot cards. <laughs> I believed my free spirit would loosen him up, and his self-discipline would finally tame me. We cared for each other with a fondness we had been saving up for quite some time. 10 p.m. on a Monday, there was a knock on my door. There he stood, a stack of mismatched Tupperware in his arms, 
with that earnest look on his face. All of the Tupperware I had left at his house cleaned and neatly stacked in his arms. It was the most pathetic sign I had ever seen. <laughs> um, you know when you said that we were two different people and that was a good thing? I interrupted. <laughs> it's too much, isn't it? I wish I could say I hadn't seen it coming. He nodded, we hugged. I changed my Facebook relationship status before he, before he even got in his car. <laughs> Our 42-day romance had fallen apart within a matter of five minutes, as if doomed from inception. It was too brief to mourn, but what I mourned was the illusion of it all. I know he wasn't as bad as the guy taking his selfie. Shirt pulled up in one hand, cell phone in the other, bathroom mirror right in front. But was I the 33-year-old girl posting pictures from her prom? <laughs> or did we just want something so badly we closed our eyes to the unflattering photos and glaring profile typos? We wanted this. We had looked up its skirt and we had kicked its tires. <laughs> this idea of sharing the future. The best intentions were there. Smart people. The ones who knew the same irreverent bands, books, and movies that wanted love so badly. I realized I will tolerate any goddamn bullshit to a fault. <laughs> and I had to admire him for not being the same way. <laughs> Maybe the internet is not the place to meet people. <laughs> like at all, <laughs> ever. Uh, mm, but you can always message me if you're Steve McQueen. <laughs> the lovely Suzanne Hoyan, everybody.